everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Ray and today is Theory Tuesday where me and James. Hi. Uh, we bring, well, he brings you a really cool story and I just kind of comment on it. <laughs> today I'd like to dedicate this episode to, um, or say a special thank you to Casey Miller who actually commented and told us about this particular story. So thank you very much, Casey. You sent my husband out a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we get started, um, I just want to tell you all the things really quick. I'm working on Galaxy by Diamond Art Club, and you can find a link to her down below. Uh, it is an affiliate link, just FYI. Uh, you can always go to the website and just type in Galaxy. She looks like this. I'm using a Harbor Freight container system for the drills. I've got a James Clevenger pen. James Clevenger is the dedicated pen turner in our group Crafters Anonymous with Mrs. Crochet and Coffee and Rachel Ray. Uh, his particular store is called Black Wolf Woodworks, if you want to check him out on Etsy. Um, and this was a handcrafted pen that he made for me specifically because I wanted moss in a pen to represent Ireland. Nicole. Cool? Like purple on the ends. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then I've got my tray from Shiny Shaza. Obviously related to the topic at hand. And the needle, mi the cover minders, excuse me, come from my own shop, at Etsy.com. That's enough of that. Let's dig in. So what are we talking about today? Um, today we're going to be talking about the um, Gulf Breeze UFO incident. And yeah, really... Thanks so much to Casey. Like this, this story is wild. <laughs> I, you know, I had, I, I read a few things just to see what it was about. But then once you start delving into it, it is like, I don't know. Is it crazy? Really? It's, it, do you know, like someone needs to make a movie out of this. Huh. It's so there's, it's just, it's great. Like, it's really great. Um, awesome. Well, as always, I, my reactions are completely like I have not heard this story before so I don't know what's going to happen <laughs> I'm in the boat with you guys um yeah this this is amazing like it's a story about a guy called Ed Walters mm -hmm. and um to a lesser extent his his wife Frances and uh, like all a lot of maybe dozens of people in the Gulf Breeze area and know? where is Gulf Breeze Gulf Breeze is on the panhandle of Florida. Oh, okay. Um, it's close enough to the kind of Alabama border. Um, I, I, I don't, I think it might be somewhere near Pensacola, but I, I don't really know. Hmm, okay. You know, it's, it, it, with, am I right there? I, in have my no idea. I have no idea. I'm not a Florida person. Yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's, a, it's fairly long. It's fairly westward along the panhandle, like I said, close to Alabama. Yeah. So anyway, it's, it's about this guy, Ed Walters, you know? Mm hmm So... Ed Walters is, he works in construction, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so one day, uh, November 11th, 1987, he's just chilling at home, you know? Um, he's in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. He looks out the window and he just sees this UFO hovering, hovering outside his house. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he takes a picture of the UFO. Okay. Yeah. So this is the actual photo. Here. Oh, we're going to put in photos. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, I... I guess th the big thing about this case is that, like, over over the period, it takes place over about a five, six month period. And mm -hmm. um, over that period, um, Ed takes 37 photos of a UFO. Oh. And he takes one video. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's quite extraordinary. So like I said, 11th of November, Ed is chilling at home. Um, he's in the kitchen. He looks out the window and he just sees this UFO hovering outside his house, you know? Huh. So he grabs his Polaroid camera. And he runs out and he takes five photographs of the UFO. Polaroids. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, it, what it does is it, it just moves across the bottom of his yard. Yeah. And kind of behind some trees, you know? Mm. Yeah. Sneaky. Yeah, exactly. But the, so he takes the five photographs of the UFO and it goes behind the trees and then it, it comes back out mm -hmm. and it shoots this blue light down on him, you know? Okay. Just like what you imagine a tractor beam being. Right. Yeah, and he's, he starts to feel himself being lifted off the ground, you know? Cool. Yeah, and he hears this voice in his head, and it says, calm down, calm down, <laughs> you know? I am calm. No. Yeah, and Ed is, Ed, is really, Ed is really mad, so he's like, he's like, what are you trying to do to me, you know? Yeah. And then the voice changes into a woman's voice and oh. starts just telling him to calm down, calm down, you know, be calm. Weird. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. And he feels himself being lifted off the ground and he's fighting it. Mm-hmm. And then in his head, he's so mad in his head. And then suddenly he sees puppies in his head. Like pictures of puppies. What? Yeah, yeah. And dogs frolicking. Humans love puppies. For, for real, like it's like, <laughs> you know, because he's so agitated, it's almost like they're trying to show him something to, to calm yeah, him down, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And the woman's voice in his head keeps going, you know, calm down, <laughs> calm down, calm down, you know? And then he he just he just feels himself being dropped by the UFO and it just skedaddles, you know? Huh. Yeah. Um. So obviously he goes inside and it, he tells his wife, Francis, like, what's just happened? And they can't figure it out. I mean, is he going crazy? Has he hallucinated? What's happening, you know? Right, yeah. But he has those Polaroids. I knew I shouldn't have eaten that much for dinner. Yeah, exactly. He has the Polaroids. So the two of them discuss it and they're like you know, how are we going to get to the bottom of it? So Mm -hmm. six days later, on the 17th of November, he sends the Polaroids into the the Gulf Breeze Sentinel, which is the local paper, you know? Okay. And and he sends it in under an assumed name like Mr. X. Okay. And then he figures if they trace it back to him, He'll just he'll just tell them, oh, that's a friend of mine. I you know I I don't know him that well. He just asked me to do it for him or whatever. You know. Yeah, he doesn't want to be like seen as crazy or something. Yeah, exactly. And I think he he doesn't know. I mean, like if something like that happens to you, you don't know if you're going crazy yourself. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they they publish it and they they give the details and they say, oh well, this happened on the 11th of November. Um, it happened you know in Gulf Breeze. Did anyone see anything unusual? Mm-hmm. You know, and um, loads. Yeah, so they're, they're just trying to see if anyone sees it. So three days later on the 20th of November, okay, mm-hmm. he's, he's lying in bed and he's asleep. Okay. And he wakes up and he's got this ringing in his ears, you know? Mm. And then suddenly he hears a voice in his head again. Hmm. Yeah, except this time the voice is speaking some African language. Oh, I was about to say, was it a dog? <laughs> no, no. The, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> The dog is speaking some African language, you know? Yeah. So he, he like jumps out of bed and he looks out the window and uh, th- there's a UFO, you know, outside the window. So he rushes down and he grabs the camera again, mm-hmm. you know, and um, he goes out and he starts like shooting off photos of the UFO again. Mm-hmm. And this time, the this voice in his head starts saying, or no, he, he like shouts, you know, at the UFO, why don't you leave me alone? Why don't you leave me alone? You know? Yeah. And the UFO says, be calm, step forward. <laughs> and it, and you know, in his head, and it repeats it again, like, be calm, step forward. And then it says, los fotos son prohibidos. What? Yeah, in Spanish, in his Crazy. head. Crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you don't know Spanish... Yeah, fo- like photos are prohibited. Yeah, like no, don't take photos. It's like he's getting on an actual ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's... And then they start, the same thing happens again, you know? Okay. He gets this blue beam down on him mm-hmm. and he starts to feel himself being pulled up into the ship, you know? Yeah. And he's fighting it and he's screaming like, leave me alone, leave me alone, you know? Yeah. And then he hears this woman's voice in his head say, like, it's just some tests. That's all, you know? Weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he's screaming at him like, what gives you the right to suck people up into your ship? You know, I don't want to go with you. And, you know, he's really railing at them, you know? Mm-hmm. And then when he's getting more and more agitated and he's screaming and shouting at the at this UFO that's trying to pull him in, suddenly in his head he sees another image, you know? Mm-hmm. But this time it's naked women. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And not, and like, it's... <laughs> Puppies didn't work. <laughs> Puppies didn't work. Let's try the naked way. <laughs> but it's all, but he said, he said like, it's, it's, it's all different wow. shapes and sizes and ages of women, you know? <laughs> We're bound like, to get his cup. <laughs> young women, old women, <laughs> pregnant women, vision. every race imaginable, all different types of women, you know? Gotta Just cover naked. all the bases, man. <laughs> yeah, and it's weird as well, because he said that... Do you know when I was when I was reading up on it, he said that the he said that the puppies were images, but that when he when the naked women showed up, that wasn't an image anymore. It was like he was in this large room with all these naked women standing around. Whoa. It wasn't like flashes, like it was just a room like stuffed with a hundred naked women. I think uh, a lot of people would be like, Well, if I'm gonna get violated <laughs> <laughs> This is not so bad. Yeah, it's. I don't know. It's it's kind. It's it's a bit. That's so weird, isn't it? It's, 
Okay, okay, sorry. I'm interrupting, but this is, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, I don't know if that calmed him down or got him more agitated or whatever, you know? Mm. So then, they're trying, like I said, they're trying to pull him into the ship with the beam, you know? Yeah. And he's fighting it all the way. And they're telling him, oh, don't worry, it's just some tests, it's not a big deal, you know? Mm -hmm. So then, then the voice in his head, the woman's voice in his head, mm -hmm. says, we will come for you. And, the, and they just drop him on the floor and whoosh, just disappear right out of there, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, do you remember the photos that were published in the Gulf Breeze Sentinel? Yeah. So people start to write into the Gulf Breeze Sentinel, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they get five letters in saying, oh, I saw a UFO, you know? Mm -hmm. And so one lady even claims to have seen a UFO about an hour after... Um, about an hour after Ed reports having like this whole incident taking place. Yeah. Yeah. So she she reports seeing a UFO and it was close to his house. Hmm. Yeah. And these people don't know each other or anything like that. Yeah. And I got a lot of kind of witness reports and I don't know where they fit in the timeline. So I'll give you some examples. There was one where it's this guy and it's it's 1987, right? Yeah. So he's an older guy and he's kind of got this big mustache. He, you know, he looks like he's been in the army or something, you know? Okay. And um, he's, he's wearing this Czech sports coat. This is 1987, so you can get away with that. <laughs> so he says that his A wife... A lot you could get away with in the you 80s. Could, you, you could, yeah. <laughs> he's, he said that his wife and himself were walking down by um, the beach, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, they just saw this UFO. And it just moved at about 5 or 10 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Just along the beach, a couple of meters up off it. Hmm. Yeah. And then there was another guy that said that he was just out fishing and uh, he looks up and there's this UFO about 400 meters away from him mm -hmm. and he's watching it and then he says he sees in the distance behind the UFO military aircraft coming to like intercept it and that the UFO just kind of tilts up at a 45 degree angle mm -hmm. and as soon as the military aircraft start catching up with it it just <laughs> and like just literally shoots off up into space Whoa. yeah Pretty crazy. <laughs> so anyway, on the 2nd of December, same story. Ed wakes up, you know? Yeah. And there's this buzzing in his head. Yeah? Yeah. And this time, it's not the aliens giving him a message. It's like he can hear this conversation that two people are having. Yeah? Okay. And they're having the conversation in Spanish. It's a man and a woman. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're talking about a child. You know, they're having a conversation about a child. And what he can remember them saying specifically is, why were we only given bananas? And then the woman goes, shh, keep your voice down. They'll hear you. Why were we... Yeah, so this time, right. Ed has had enough of these UFOs and they're messing, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so he grabs his camera and he grabs a handgun. Oh. Now, I'm going to imagine this is one of those big hand cannons, you know? Like, I imagine this is like a dirty Harry gun or something. Okay. You know? So he's there, and he's, he's got the, the huge one, you know? Mm hmm And he goes out, and there's the, there's the aliens again in the UFO. And they're up there, you know? Mm hmm And he hears the voice again in his head, and it's like, Stay calm. Walk forward. Stay calm. Weird. Walk forward. Ed, anyway, is not messing around, and he points the gun at the UFO. Okay? Okay. <laughs> and he's like, why don't you guys leave me alone? And this time, instead of the blue beam, his wife Frances comes out of the house and, and the UFO just like psh, shoots off into space. Okay. You know? So they go back into the house and they're in the house and he's like going, you saw it too. And she was like, yeah, I saw it this time, you know? Mm -hmm. What is going on, Ed? And he's like, I don't know. And he looks out the window and there's this four foot guy with a helmet on and he's wearing a silver spacesuit, and he's got this silver bat on in his hand. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah? Okay, okay, okay. No, <laughs> like I was saying, Ed has had enough of these aliens messing with him, you know? So he grabs the 45. Cut the gun. <laughs> yeah, he grabs it and he's out the door, right? Right. And um, yeah, so he goes out and th th to kind of confront this alien, you know, mm -hmm. frankly, to 
kick the stuffing out of this alien, you know? Yeah. He's not messing. He goes out there and the UFO comes back and it shoots down a blue beam of light, light mm-hmm. and it and it just phew, that alien is gone. What? Yeah, it used the blue beam of light to to like beam up the alien that was there with the with the bat on. <laughs> yeah. And okay. he get, so so he can have a fight, but Ed does manage to get a few photos. Yeah. Oh, does he? Yeah, because like from this point on Ed is never traveling without a camera and a, and a gun. Oh, okay. I yeah? understand that, yeah. He's so, had... Do you have this photo? Huh? Do you have this photo? I don't have this photo, no. Okay. Um, I have some photos from later on. Okay, just let me know so I can... Sure. Um, so then the Gulf Breeze Sentinel, you know? Like this is, this is becoming a big story for them. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Um, so it's selling a lot of editions. People, it's really grabbed the po- kind of popular imagination, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so the Gulf Breeze Sentinel then, it gets a photograph from a guy. And the guy calls himself Believer Bill, you know? And Believer Bill has a photograph mm-hmm. that's, that shows the same kind of UFO. Because you can, you can see the UFO he's, he's photographing. They're really defined, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you can see portholes in them and, and kind of rocket boosters and all this kind of thing. So Believer Bill sends in a photo, but Believer Bill's photo was taken in June 1986. Oh. So significantly earlier than when Ed started reporting it. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And he said that he was really embarrassed, you know, mm-hmm. and that he didn't want to talk about it with anyone. He hadn't spoken about it with anyone. But when he saw Ed's photo... He knew that that it, that he hadn't imagined it. That's that someone else had a photo of it, and you know. Yeah. So he so the Sentinel anyway. They published the two photos together side by side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, as you can imagine now, things are starting to reach kind of fever pitch around Gulf Breeze with all these UFO sightings and the photographs. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So because it had attracted so much attention on December fourth. MUFON launch like an official investigation. Wait, what's what? MUFON? MUFON, yeah. It's it's an acronym. It's uh, the Mutual UFO Network. They're the, they like were Are set they up. Are they a regulatory body? Like, they're not a regulatory body. They're like, it's, do you know, obviously <laughs> you have not, not even had a cursory look into the UFO sphere. No. Yeah, MUFON are, they like, they started in the, in the like 60s. And they're a bunch of, um, they're a bunch of, they're, they're civilians and they're like the largest organization for investigating UFO occurrences in, in, certainly in the United States, you know? Oh, okay. Um, they're the guys that were behind the disclosure project in the, in the noughties, like starting in 2000 and stuff like that. Okay. So they, they launch an official investigation. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So on December 5th. Of 87? Yeah, of 1987. Yeah? Mm Mm-hmm. Ed is Ed is kind of chilling out in his yard, you know. He is a lot of chilling out. He's just in his yard chilling out. I mean, you know, sitting on a deck chair, enjoying the the weather and stuff. And it's in the evening again. Mm-hmm. All of the all of these events take place in the evening, you know. <laughs> so suddenly, he sees a different type of UFO again, which I don't have a photograph of either. But I think it's it's kind of described as being like an orange kind of oblong thing, you know? Okay. Um, if you can picture that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, he sees a different type of um, UFO. Mm-hmm. And it's just behind the tree line of his house. And he snaps one or two photos of it. And I've got to, I've got to assume that he has some kind of gun with him. Or he went into the house to get a gun. Okay. Because he's kind of because he's because prepared. he's had enough of the aliens right. pushing him around, coming on onto his property trying to kidnap him. Does he have a concealed carry weapon license? Oh, he this gun is always visible. Oh, okay. I would think he's, <laughs> he's always waving it at the sky. Um, I assume, or he at least covering himself, you know, turning around quickly in case it's behind him. What's the yeah? Um, what's the name of that character in Looney Tunes? Uh, who's always going after Bugs Bunny? Um, Elmer Fudd. Yeah. He's like, do you know what? <laughs> That's the 
the image of him. <laughs> I could, yeah. I think I think he's probably more like, um, you know, y- Yosemite Sam at this stage. Like he's yeah. he started out like Elmer Fudd, and now he's like Yosemite Sam. He's not taking any mess in your darn <laughs> like your darn tooting like kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> so so what happens is there's this different type of UFO from the ones he's seen um, in the last two sightings, you know. Right. And it's it starts talking to him again in his head, mm-hmm. you know. And so in the woman's voice, it says. Do not resist. You are in grave danger. And then, Zehas. 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 Yeah, Zehas. Um, and then Ed's like, what do you want from me? You know? Right. And presumably he's pointing a gun at them. And then they say, we have come for you. You are in grave danger. Zehas. What is Zehas? Who knows? Who knows? Okay. Who knows? So, like I said, Ed takes a quick pick, and they don't try the blue light messing with him this time. They just take off. But he doesn't manage to get the picture. He doesn't manage to get the picture. Okay. Oh, no, no, sorry. He does. He, he gets one quick picture this time. Yeah, he gets one quick picture. Like So, on the 10th of December, more people get in contact with the Gulf Breeze Sentinel. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to tell you one of the stories I came across. So it's, I'm going to assume that it happened here. So it's around about this time, the 10th of December, you know, mm-hmm. there's some kids in elementary school. Mm-hmm. They're about nine years old. Yeah. Okay. And then suddenly they come, they come rushing into their uh, teacher. And her teacher is Mrs. Bertram, you know, Mrs. Bertram, Mrs. Bertram. So these kids come running in out of the schoolyard. And they're all excited and they're like, Mrs. Bertram, Mrs. Bertram, we just saw a UFO. We just saw a UFO, you know? Mm -hmm. And she said that she went over and they said, oh, it just went over there behind those trees. And she went to the window and looked out and she couldn't see anything. So Mrs. Bertram obviously is not going to take any messing from kids like she's an experienced elementary school teacher. Yeah. And she says, now, now, calm down, like. And she puts two kids at, at... like sitting very far away from each other at either ends of a big table Mm -hmm. and she gives them paper and she goes without talking to each other or looking at each other you draw what you just saw and they drew the same picture and it was the same image as the ufo that ed walters had been photographing what yeah i'm telling you okay no messing (laughs) so that was that was december 10th december 17th Ed wakes up in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. This time there's no buzzing in his head, you know? And there's no no voices. But there are three dark figures standing above his bed. Oh, okay. Yeah? So he he starts to get this pain in his head. And Ed is like, no way. I'm not going down without a fight, you know? Mm -hmm. So he jumps out of bed and he's like, come on, you aliens, I'll take you, you know? No messing. The aliens are frightened, yeah? Mm-hmm. They bail out the window, yeah? Okay. Ed is like, oh, oh, they are not getting away this time. Runs downstairs, grabs his gun, grabs a camera, and he runs out and he snaps a picture of them, you know? And they are scared because they are out of there. Okay. So this time, no blue light, but they're in his bedroom. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So we managed to get another photo of them that time. Okay? Okay. This is the 23rd of December. So that's a few days later. Mm -hmm. Okay? Ed is like, oh, it's a nice evening. So I'm going to, maybe I'll jump in the pool, you know? So he goes over and he says he turns on the pool filter. And then he gets this weird feeling, you know, prickling in the back of his neck. Okay. And he turns around and now there's three UFOs and they're hovering just over his property line, just out, out the back of his house. Mm-hmm. Just kind of like behind some trees and they're going in and out from behind the trees. Mm-hmm. So he runs in the house, he grabs the Polaroid and presumably a gun and he comes out and he just has time to take a few photos and this time they're gone. Mm. No talking in his head, no blue lights. Maybe they're getting a message, you know? Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. Maybe they're getting a message. I don't know about that. Yeah. 
so around about the same time, yeah, the Sentinel gets some more photos from Believer Bill. Okay. You know? Yeah. Now, Believer Bill doesn't say when the photos were taken or anything, but presumably the same time as the other ones, of uh, June 86, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, just after Christmas, okay? Yep. Ed, this time now, I've got to assume, because this time Ed takes some video of a UFO flying in, in a wooded area just behind his house. Mm -hmm. Now, i got to assume at this time, because this is video, not, not still photography, you know? Yeah. So i got to assume that everywhere Bill goes, or has been going for the last number of weeks, he's been armed... Bill or Ed? Oh, Ed, sorry. Sorry, yeah. Anywhere that Ed goes, like for the last few weeks, he's been armed with a gun and a camera. Okay, he's, in fact, getting, he's getting a bit paranoid, like... It, it, Rachel, <laughs> it's not paranoia if they're actually out to get you. Uh -huh. Like they've lifted them up with a blue beam twice. They're telling them to be calm. We're just going to take you away for some tests. What would you do? I mean, has he been tested for schizophrenia? Like, Are you... <laughs> Sorry. Continue, continue. Ray, come on, it's, it's it. So yeah, uh... this time Ed shoots some video. And what happens is as soon as he kind of points the camera at the UFOs, they they basically hover there for a second and then they must figure, oh, wow, we're on film, you know, and they just disappear off the video, you know, mm -hmm. just wink out. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, <laughs> at this stage, it's not paranoia. Ed is pretty rattled, okay. you know, okay. I mean, seriously, I don't know what would happen. So anyway, January 12th. Yeah. Quite a while later, they've been away now. The UFOs haven't come near him for nearly two weeks, you okay. know, or more than two weeks. And I guess at this time, he must still pretty be, be pretty calm about things, you know? Calm? Yeah, he must have calmed down a little bit. Like, maybe these guys are gone, you know? But he's still traveling everywhere with a number of cameras and a number of guns, I've got to assume. Florida man. Mm-hmm. Sorry, go ahead. So... <clears throat> Anyway, he's working outside, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, it's late in the evening. He's just, he's on, he's on a job and he's leaving the job site. Mm -hmm. And I guess he's checking a few things to make sure they've got everything for the next evening or for the next morning when they start work again, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Getting all his ducks in a row as you do, yeah? yeah? And he comes out and I guess he comes out of one of those prefabs that they've got on a building site, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he goes down the little wooden steps and... Hops into his uh, his truck, starts it up, pulls out onto the road, going to drive home thinking, can't wait to get home, I'm starving, you know? Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, <laughs> down comes this UFO out of a cusp of trees and starts hovering in the road in front of him. And it's only about five or six feet off the, off the road, you know? Yeah. And... This, this is actually the most famous photo of the whole lot. And I have that photo. Okay. Yeah. Ed's there. He stops his truck because he can't, get, he can't go under it. It's only about four or five feet off the road, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's thinking, oh, I am going to murder these aliens if they don't get out of my face, you know? Yeah. So he starts to reach for his shotgun in the back seat of the car. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly this bright white light just hits him and he starts to feel kind of paralyzed you know it's really difficult to move and he's getting he's getting these crazy like pins and needles pains all up and down his arms mm -hmm. you know and he's reaching into the back seat trying to get to the 12 gauge you know <laughs> and he can't and he's cutting around like this trying to get it and he can't get it but he hooks his hand around the the strap on the 12 gauge you know okay and then he reaches over and he gets the Polaroid that's on the, the passenger seat and he manages to, to get out of the car all the time being hit with this white beam and you know the pins and needle pains are getting yeah. worse all the time Yeah. and he's like walking along the road like in, like some kind of zombie, you know? Oh, he's out of the car? Yeah, he's got out of the car he managed because Ed does not mess around like, you know? 
He's got he's got superhuman. He's going full Terminator Three. Right? He's, he's Terminator Two. Right? He's a mixture of of so so annoyed with these guys. He's had enough. <laughs> okay. You know, and also he's just tough and he's not taking any mess in. And you know, if it he's not going down without a fight. Still, yeah. Yeah. So he's he's stumbling along the the road and the pain is getting worse and worse. And he manages to raise the Polaroid and take a photo. And then that photo is probably like the most famous of all the collection, you know? Right. Because you can see this um, UFO and it's hovering just a few feet off the road. Mm -hmm. And you can see where the like kind of thrusters or whatever you would call them that are keeping it up, you know, keeping it. Thrusters. Thrusters. Yes, that's right. Yes. So the thrusters, uh, you can see it and you can see the light on the on the road and. You know, it's really impressive. Like, so he pull, he gets, he takes a shot of it with the Polaroid, and then he's like trying to raise the shotgun, trying to get it into his hand so he can, you know, menace them a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then next thing you know, boop boop boop. There's four blue lights shoot down in the middle of the road. Yeah. And it's the, it's four of these guys with the helmets and the silver suits. Huh. Yeah, and they've got these batons, and they start to like come towards him you know and he you know he just gets a bad feeling he's like i, I don't like i don't like the look of this <laughs> guys with silver suits and batons coming at me this is bad like so he struggles back into the car and luckily he hadn't turned the engine off and he just literally <clears throat> guns it and just takes off out of there you know i imagine he would have to because the the ufo is still in the middle of the road you know and he's taken off down it and like the guys in the silver suits are jumping because he's going to hit them. And he goes a little bit off road and then he's back on the road and he just takes off. And the further he gets away from the UFO, the less kind of numb and less pain he feels, you know. Yeah. But he's still sore for, for quite some time afterwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Did, so he, did he go to the ER or anything? He did. You know, when he got home, like he, he, he obviously must have said like Francis, like, you know, I told her about the experience and they must have checked him out and he didn't have any bruising or burns or anything, you know? Okay. Yeah. Um, and the pins and needles had kind of subsided at this stage. So, I mean, that's that's pretty that's pretty frightening, you know? Mm-hmm. And just when he thought like that's January 12th. And the last time he saw them was the 28th of December. Mm-hmm. So he must have thought like, oh, I'm rid of these guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, not to be put off. He, uh, sorry, not to be put off. The two guys from MUFON, like he contacts MUFON. Do you remember the Mutual UFO Network? Yeah. Yeah, he contacts those guys. So they kind of set up more or less a stakeout at his house, you know? Okay. And um, so they're they're sitting in a car... Uh, doing 12-hour shifts where they just sit across from his house Mm -hmm. and they give Ed a walkie-talkie and they say like if you start to get any of the feelings you know the buzzing in your ears or the pain in your head or whatever Mm -hmm. just give us a shout and we'll come running in yeah yeah. we've got all the cameras we've got recording equipment we'll get you know what I mean we're we're bound to get to the bottom of this we'll catch it you know right so one night um, Ed starts getting this feeling in his head again, you know, mm-hmm. um, and he knows that any minute now he's going to hear some voices in his head, you know. So he walkie talkies out to the MUFON guys mm-hmm. and they grab their stuff and they they rush in, you know, mm-hmm. and Ed's like, oh, oh, I, I think I can hear him. I, I think they're out the back. They haven't said anything, but I, I've got the same feeling, the same feeling I've always got, you know? Yeah. And the MUFON guy goes out in the back, and sure enough, there's this light in the sky, you know? Okay. And he catches it on video. Like, independently on video. Hmm. Yeah. But then it turns out to be an aircraft. Oh. Like, just a regular, ordinary aircraft, you know? Hmm. And Ed said, oh, I thought they were coming, you know? I got the, the thing in my head, and... Oh, it was so, yeah. I don't know. Ooh. Yeah, so Here. Yeah. So anyway, on January 24th, yeah? Yeah. So this is 1988 now. Yeah. And it's about four months after this, all these incidents have started happening, yeah? Mm-hmm. So Dwayne Cook, he's the publisher of the Gulf Breeze Sentinel. Mm-hmm. He gets in contact with Ed. And Ed agrees that, 
yeah, he can come over and they can go out and they can try and find some UFOs. Okay. You know? Yeah. So he comes over and Dwayne has a video camera with him, yeah? Mm-hmm. So they're, they're driving down um, kind of Highway 98. And it's, it's very close to where the last photo I would, that we talked about was taken. You know, where he got hit by the white beam and he got all the pain and all that? In the car, yeah. Yeah. So Ed and Dwayne are driving around in the car. Highway 98, very close to where they've had previous UFO experience, yeah? Mm-hmm. And then Ed starts getting, you know, he says to Dwayne, I've, I've got the feeling in my head again. I've got it, like, pull over to the side, you know? So they pull over to the side of the highway, and Ed is in there, and he's like, oh, oh, oh. And he jumps out of the car, you know? Mm-hmm. And he walks, he walks forward, Polaroid in one hand, I'm going to say a handgun in the other, <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. I'm going to assume that he never goes anywhere and he's not armed, yeah? Yeah. So he goes out and, um, yeah, he, he goes out and he, he walks a few feet down the road in front of the car, you know? And he, he's shouting at the sky like, Show yourselves, show yourselves, you know, why won't you show yourselves? Leave me alone, you know, I don't want to go with you or whatever. And uh, Dwayne gets out and Dwayne's like standing there in front of the car like, okay, are you okay, Ed? Are you okay, Ed? And then Ed turns around towards Dwayne and he suddenly goes, oh my God. And he raises the Polaroid and he snaps it off. And Dwayne, by the way, is, is filming this incident. You know, yeah. of Ed on the road, shouting at the sky. And then, like I said, Ed turns around, snaps off a Polaroid right over Dwayne's shoulder. And Dwayne swings the video camera around. But the UFO, it's taken off right like that. You know? So then Ed hands Dwayne the Polaroid. And Dwayne does that thing with the Polaroid, you know, where you shake... Gotta shake it like a Polaroid picture. Quite, quite right. So... He's shaking it like a Polaroid picture, because it is in fact a Polaroid picture. Right. Um, and it and it it you know the 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 kind of image swims up out of the out of the water. You know what I mean? Yeah. And lo and behold, it's a picture of Dwayne standing there holding a video camera, their car, and a UFO hovering just behind the car. Freaky. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so like Dwayne is. You know, there, I read this quote, but I didn't, I didn't write it down. I, but it was something like, well, Ed, I, I know, I believe this was actually, he said this on the video. Well, Ed, you know, you took the photo and I see, I, I developed, I had the photo in my hand myself while it was developing and there was a UFO and it was to shot off kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm. So, um, so that's the story anyway. Now, they stop, the UFO shows up a number of more times. Mm-hmm. Yeah? And... Um, it shows up in all different sorts of circumstances. They speak to Ed again in his head, mm-hmm. but they don't try the blue beam of light or anything like that. Right. Yeah. Okay. They they speak to him in his head and they keep, now it becomes apparent that he's Zehas because they refer to him as Zehas, you know? And they start telling him again, stuff like, you must come with us. You are in grave danger, you know? Say us, come with us. All different types of voices, different languages even, you know? Mm-hmm. In fact, there's one incident where Ed is just about to get in the pool and the UFO comes from him. And like I said, it's not as aggressive anymore. You know, this time he's just asking them why, why? And they won't explain why. They just keep telling him, Zehas, you're in danger. You must come with us. It's just some tests, you know? And like I said, one day he's he's out in the yard, he's about to get in the pool and they come and visit him and his wife Frances snaps a photo of this and I actually have that photo. Um, we'll put it right here. And I've included this photo because this is one of the most extraordinary UFO photos I've ever seen. Let me see it. I'm going to show it to you right now. <laughs> this reminds me somehow of... How would you say? Left, there you go. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to assume that he's armed. <laughs> what is he wearing? He's he has a towel. He's about to get in the pool. Oh. You can see the you can see the line of the pool right there. Oh, I can't cuz the yeah, okay. 
<laughs> Isn't that extraordinary? So all the all the time. Can, can you turn it a little bit so I can? Oh, I see it now. Okay. So all the time, <laughs> all the time, like I said, they keep they keep saying that to him, like Zehas, don't worry about it, come with us and all this, you know. So it gets really. He's freaked out now, and he's wondering, you know. <sighs> what's this all about? They seem to know me. They seem to know what's going on, you know? So he thinks maybe it's something that's happened earlier in his life and he's blocked out. So he starts to to go to hypnosis sessions regularly Mm -hmm. to try and unlock these memories, you know? Right. Yeah. So on February the 7th, 1988, a while later, Francis is out in in, in their backyard, yeah? Yeah. UFO shows up and this time they're done talking. And they start chasing her and they're shooting blue beams at her like they used to be, like they used to shoot at him, you know? Okay. And look, here's the actual photo of that happening. That's her, that's Francis rushing into the house. So, okay. that's, that's, that's it. Like, it's, I mean, it's scary now because they've moved on from, from Ed, you know? And yeah. now they're attacking Francis. February 10th, three days later. Yeah. The MUFON guys, they give Ed this special camera, yeah? And it's it's a camera that can't... It's very hard to do double exposures on, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. And at the same time, Ed buys a brand new Polaroid, you know? And this Polaroid is... You can't do double exposures on a Polaroid, obviously, you know? Yeah. But he buys this new Polaroid. I guess it's probably a more powerful one. They said in some of the, the literature that um, that he bought this one specifically because it's much, much, much harder to get a double exposure on it. So presumably it's possible to get a double exposure on a Polaroid. To prove that it's not fake. Exactly. So MUFON give him this other camera and that camera has had, got special seals on it and stuff so that you can't do the double exposure. So you know on those wind-on film ones? You would yeah. take a photo and then kind of basically pop the wind-on thing so that it doesn't yeah, wind it like... on. Yeah, exactly. But you would, you would kind of pop it so that it doesn't wind on. And then you would take another photo over the one you've taken previously. Right, right, right. So they have special seals on this camera. They give it to Ed and they're like, the next time you go to photograph it, use this camera, you know? Yeah. So now Ed's got a shotgun, a forty-five, a Polaroid, another Polaroid, and a special type of camera. And only two hands. And only two hands. Yeah? <laughs> at, this, at this time as well, a guy called Bruce Maccabee gets involved, you know? Mm-hmm. Now again, if... If you were any way into, like, UFO stuff, the minute someone says Bruce Maccabee, you would go, ah. You know? Because Bruce Maccabee is, like, a famous ufologist, you know? Ufologist. A ufologist. He's, like, an optical physicist, they call him. He used to work for the British, or the British, for the American Navy and all this sort of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. But he's been working, like, doing UFO cases since the 60s. All right? So, anyway, he gets involved, yeah? Mm-hmm. So... Shortly, well, actually, a, a good, good time after that, on March the 20th, it's been quiet for a while. Yeah. Ed suddenly hears this buzz in his head, you know, and the voices start again. Uh-oh. And there's lots of different voices, men voices, women voices in different languages. Yeah. And they keep saying, Zeas, in sleep you will know. <gasps> Zeas. Oh no. In sleep you will know. Coming after his dreams? Yeah, so he rushes out and he he gets the MUFON camera and he photographs the the UFOs, yeah? And MUFON have also set up this camera in his backyard where it's two cameras so that when you take the photograph, you've got the same, you know, when you press the shutter, it takes the photos at the same time. Yeah. So that they can triangulate how far away the the UFO was, you Hmm. know? Yeah. And they reckon it was about four or five hundred meters. And... Bruce Maccabee is examining the photos and saying, yeah, these are all bona fide photos. They're not fakes or anything like that, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you remember I said that Ed is undergoing hypnosis? Yes. So the hypnosis reveals a number of very unusual kind of memories in his head, yeah? Mm-hmm. One of them is he's 17 and he wakes up and there's an alien at the foot of his bed, you know? And he screams and the alien jumps out the window. And his brother, Bert, comes in. And it's like, calm down, calm down, calm down. He's like, I saw an alien. And Bert's like, you didn't see an alien. And then the two of them look. And on the floor of the house, there's all these wet footprints going between the rooms. And it looks like there's three or four sets of footprints. And most of them come to his room, but some of them are going to Bert's room as well. Then he remembers that, true hypnosis, that when he was 25, he was driving down the highway. 
And then suddenly this bright light shoots past him and starts circling around the car while he's driving down the highway. Mm -hmm. And then it shoots off and he finds himself at the side of the highway and he's missing time. Oh, Classic abduction stuff. Yeah. Another event is he's out on a lake and he's canoeing. He's, he's 33 years of age and this metallic object and it's kind of glowing green raises out of the lake and he, he can feel himself being pulled into it mm -hmm. and he starts paddling away and he can't get away and then he, he loses memory and he wakes up in the boat and he's miles away on the lake and again, he is missing time. It's much later than he expected. Yeah, exactly. This is... This is the last experience that ed has with them you know okay, yeah so it's may the first yeah 88 1988 and this is about seven or eight months after it started mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. and ed goes down to the south side beach and he goes down there because he feels like this is where the aliens are going to be this is where they're going to be you know mm -hmm. i'm going to go down there and i'm going to have it out so presumably he's got two polaroids a 35 mil camera, a MUFON camera, and another special MUFON camera on an armature so he can judge the distance. Mm -hmm. He's got a handgun and a shotgun. <laughs> and he is angry, you know? So he goes down, he starts to hear the buzz in his head. Yeah. And again, they're saying, Zehas, you have come, you know? It's just some tests. You're in grave danger. You're in grave. And they put the beam on him. Yeah. And he starts to feel himself being lifted up and he's pointing guns at them and he is shouting at them. You know, he's railing against them. Yeah. Anyway, he just, as far as he remembers, the light goes out and he drops down onto the sand. Okay? Yeah. Except he's missing an hour and 15 minutes. Huh. Yeah. And he's got this black gunk under his fingernails. Black gunk? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. They had it tested. It was inconclusive. But anyway, yeah, he's got this black gunk under his head and, and that's it. That's the last that Ed ever hears from these aliens. Hmm. What do they want? Who's that? Zehas, like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we have some more time? Yeah. We so, have a few more minutes. Okay. So what happens then is that in 1990, so this is two years after those incidences, mm -hmm. Ed, I guess, is really annoyed and, well, I guess, I mean, like, how would you feel about a house where you kept seeing UFOs pop up? So he, he sells the house, yeah? Yeah. And he sells the house to a guy called Mr. Minzer, yeah? Mm hmm So Minzer one day is like, oh, I gotta get some stuff out of the attic, and he goes up in the attic, and the insulation is, you know, got a bump in it in one part of the attic? Yeah. And he goes over and he looks under the bump, and there's this paper and styrofoam model of the UFO. Mm. So then he comes forward and starts saying that um, Ed is trying to fake these photos. Right. But like, when you compare, a lot of people have compared the, the, the images and the model, mm -hmm. and they're not exact, you know? Oh. Like, they don't really look like each other. And then Ed, Ed swore to, to the end that his experiences were real. You know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got Bruce Maccabee, like optical physicist for the Navy, backed him up. <laughs> and that was the last of the... That's the last of it. But obviously the, the you know, the, the thing, the thing with the model and Menser kind of did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what happened as well was after Ed's experience, yeah, mm -hmm. a lady called Brenda Pollock came forward. OK, mm -hmm. and she's an elected member of Gulf Breeze City Council. Mm -hmm. And she came forward and she said that she had seen a red light um, and a UFO that looked just like the ones Ed had photographed. Mm -hmm. And it was hanging over the United Methodist Church in, in uh, Gulf Breeze. Mm. A councilwoman. Yeah. Right. Then another thing happened a few years later in 1995, a guy called Mike Hawkins was just driving along the highway on his way home from work then one day, you know? Mm -hmm. And he saw this this light behind a tree, so he jumps out and he starts filming, and it's weaving in and out from behind the trees, and it's a UFO, and it looks exactly like the one that, that Ed photographed. Hmm. So it's, I mean, it's hard to say, really, isn't it? 
If you would like to give your, your thoughts and opinions, please feel free to do so down below. Uh, I think we're about to give our own opinions on it right now before we let you go. Dude, I think this guy is schizophrenic. I, d I don't think he's schizophrenic. And I think, I think that he just wanted to cover up. He has up. all the photographs. He has yeah, 37 he photographs. Them. Yeah, he Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean... I really, I really like this. He wanted to be famous. I love the story, though. The different voices in his head. The fact that he's always... Like, that scene... I'm going to call it a scene. Zayas. Zayas. In sleep, you will know. You know? <laughs> it's brilliant, like. I love the different voices, like, that he wakes up on the second night and they're broadcasting someone speaking an African language into his head. Yeah. You know, it's almost like the aliens are like, where's this guy live again? Tanzania? <laughs> Do you know? It's like... I love it. I love the. I love the one with the where he gets out of the car and he's got the Polaroid and the shotgun, <laughs> and he's like dragging the shotgun along the road, <laughs> pointing the Polaroid at him. You know. Wow. There's something so amazing about that story, though. You know. Yeah, the way you tell it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. But there's yeah, there's there's quite there's quite a few documentaries like all of the there's one by and it actually came up. When when Casey suggested it and I googled it, mm -hmm. um, he the guy this guy Holden Hardman had actually just posted a documentary about it the day before. Really? Like literally one or two days beforehand, brand new documentary just finished it. You know? Wow. And there's another there was another few documentaries I watched, but all of the documentaries have the same process where we'll link to Holden Hardman's one, like, but all of the documentaries have the same process where they um. They go through the story and then they and then they literally go out in the field and fake these photos, you know? Yeah. Um, the important. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess that's that's basically it. How do you how do you feel about it? Like, right? I mean, at first, like the way that you were telling the story, I definitely thought that the guy had like some mental instabilities. I'm sure that he did. But every time he had the photos the next day, he had the photos, you know? There's other there's other things as well. Like, do you remember? It looks like I mean, it looks like the the picture of his wife was just an overexposure or something. Yeah, they're all like that. It's you know they're Where all like that. You've got the streaks of light. I mean, that was very very common. I mean, okay, just to to give you an example. So, um, I was baptized when I was like five or something. Yeah. Um, and in my baptism picture there are rays of light coming down. Yeah. And my family swears that it's like a guardian angel, you know, and that's a sweet story. Yeah. But you could just as easily have said it was an alien. Like, you know, if you wanted to. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I like the creativity of rolling with it as well. Like, it's like, oh no, those aren't artifacts for me double exposing it. That's a beam that, that's like a transporter beam, but also a tractor beam. It's, it's a whatever you need it to do beam, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I like it though. I like, I mean, like, I, and I personally like Dead as well. Like, he, do you know what I mean? You can, there's interviews with him and stuff like, and. Well, you're thinking of it as him being like a character. Like. Oh, he totally is though, you know. The it's... Irish version of a character where they're just like a, a person who has funny stories that you don't believe. Yeah, but you know, that's, I mean, I've, I've said this before, like, unless it's, unless it's actually happening right now, it's a story. It's nothing is real unless it's happening right now. I'm just you know? glad that he didn't like use emergency services for any of those calls, because if he had <laughs> taken away actual there's, services from people who were actually in trouble, I would have been a bit There's upset. other, there's other stories as well, where like, because Fra Francis is in on it too, obviously, like, Clearly. but there's other stories as well. Then there's one where he invites his friends around. And he pulls exactly the same thing as he did on Dwayne Cook, where he's like, oh, guys, I feel this. I feel this thing in my head, you know, you know, leave me alone. I'm not Zayas. And then he turns around and takes a photograph over their shoulders. And when they turn around, it's gone. He's like, it just took off. And then he shows them the Polaroid. He's totally <laughs> double exposed. He images. totally has. Like, <laughs> he's what a legend, though. I mean, that's that's dedication to the bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. He even... Like, I've got to believe that he's in his kitchen and he sees an airplane outside and the MUFON guys are outside. And he's like, Francis, give me the walkie-talkie. I got an idea. Yeah. Well, guys, I got a pain in my head. You know, <laughs> it's a French guy. <laughs> you know, he's telling me I'm called Zayas. Oh <laughs> yeah, I, I like I like it. You, do you know, there's a bit where he tells, um, 
where he says to Oprah in an interview, well, not an interview. Oprah? Yeah, he's on Oprah and everything. What? Yeah, they're on Oprah. Oh my goodness. It's, it was a huge story. It was a huge thing. Like, So this lady who's who looks like the most <sighs> 80s woman ever, you know? <laughs> She's got like a this it kind of the 80s. bright kind of yellowy, mustardy, greeny kind of pattern shirt on her. And she's got, you know, that kind of haircut in the 80s where it was like almost like a bowl cut, but it was all ruffle looking. You know what I mean? Yes. She's got hair like that and like big 80s glasses and Oprah is standing there and, you know, the lady's going, oh, well, they found this UFO in his house. And I mean, what are we going to have to say about that? I mean, it looks just like the one he photographed and whatever. And then they go to Ed and he's wearing like this three piece suit, you know, mm-hmm. looking very dapper. And he's like, um, he's like, well, Oprah, they're just making this up. And they made that model to try and tear down my story because they're afraid of the truth. You know, <laughs> they just can't take the it. it I, it's some truth bomb in here, you know. But what a guy like, I mean, fair play to Ed. Wow. And yeah. so I'm, I'm guessing that the other person that sent in photos was Ed as well. I'm going to say it was Ed, yeah. And there was even, I read this thing as well about Ed gave this um, this guy who, I think he might have worked for his construction firm or something like that, but he was a young guy. He was like 18 or 19, you know? Mm-hmm. And he gave him photographs as well and told him to go to the paper and tell them that he had taken them on at a certain area at a certain time, mm-hmm. you know? But the kid kind of just freaked out and he didn't do it and he kept him at home. And then a few years later, after he got out of high school or whatever, maybe he was 16 or 17, actually. And after he got out of high school and he thought about it, he showed the photos to his dad and he said, look, I got these from Ed and he told me to do this, you know? Yeah. So then the dad, so then the dad and the son go to a newspaper and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. But it's such a, it's such a creative story. I love it. Like, (laughs) do you know all those nice touches? Like where the aliens are like telling him, don't take photos in Spanish and... (laughs) <laughs> it's cool like come on and it's ufos are seem to be a huge thing still in gulf breeze you know well yeah i guess they have the notoriety from yeah oprah yeah oprah wow but it was on there's loads of there's loads of interviews with people that claim to have seen them as well and they're on like local tv stations and stuff you can find those too yeah. there there's actually a lot of those clips are in the in the documentary by holden hartman and we'll we can link to that Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, check out the documentary link down below. Um, I think we're going to end it here today. Luna's getting a bit anxious. Mm-hmm. I'd say she hears the, the ringing in her ears. Are they getting close? Are Luna. they here? Luna, <laughs> you're in there in Zahos. <laughs> Zahas. No, no, she's Zahos. She's Zahas's dog. She's a lovely zuppy. Oh, right, right, right. What a lovely zuppy zug. What a lovely zuppy zug. <laughs> right. Okay, guys, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna go before it gets too silly. Thank you all so much for watching. <laughs> if you have any suggestions for more um, we- weird and wacky, uh, please leave them in the comments below and we will do some research. Yeah, I would, I would love to research. I'm really into this researching thing now. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely fun. Um, so yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful day, a safe week ahead, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.